photography but uh, we've got 60 mile an hour winds and howling uh, rain so uh, lashing down so I decided to um, today just talk a bit about the gear I use for wildlife photography and what's actually in my camera bags um, as you can see here this one here is my low pro pro tracker 600 now this is a, a huge huge rucksack that literally fits my main prime lens in which is a 600 also fit a 300 in there prime, 100 to 400 zoom, two camera bodies, and a, a multitude of other bits and bobs, which we'll go into a bit later on. But this one here is a proper trekking distance pack when I need all my gear with me. A really, really, really good solid bag by Low Pro. This is the older version. Um, so it's the Low Pro Pro Trekker 600. They do a new one now, which is a black bag um, with lots of uh, new added features, but I'm, I love these bags. They're absolutely super, and I pick these up um, second hand um, and some of them I got brand new as well through through um, various um, shopping sites so yeah absolutely awesome so this one here as you can see this is a 600 absolutely beauty and this is my big wildlife backpack so next I've got this which is the low pro pro trekker 400 so this one here um, fits in um, two camera bodies flashes um, it can also fit lots of batteries. Um, I've got uh, a 70 to 200, 100 to 400, my 300 prime. Um, lots and lots of added bits and bobs in there, and also a hydration sack which fits in each of these pockets um, with a tube that goes through. And um, when you're trekking long distance, you can then um, have a good bit of hydration as you're going. Really, really comfortable and, and a great little bag. And I say both. Both these two and the 600 bag have got the AW, so they're all weather. So they've got a, co a cover that's integral on the base of the bag, which then pulls over the top and covers the, the whole of the bag when, um, it, when weather conditions dictate that you need it. But yeah, that's the 400, absolutely superb. And this is the little, the little babby of the group. This is the, this is the, the 300 AW uh, Pro Trekker, and this is my landscape bag. So I, I pack all uh, my main landscape camera body in here with a 50 mil, 17 to 40, uh, a fisheye, my 70 to 200. Um, I've got a couple other lenses in there as well. Lots of batteries, lots of filters, GPS unit, um, flash, tripod head. Um, also gets a hydration sack and, and lots and lots of other bits. A really, really good all round bag. And it's great, quite lightweight. And it's great for, for tracking. Plus, this one here is um, is uh, as well as the 400 uh, uh, airline carry-on. So they're really really good bags if you need to take a bag away with you. And that's the three main bags I use for most of my wildlife photography. So I've gone through with you the bags I use to sort of house most of my equipment, and now I thought I'd go through my lenses from from the smallest to the largest um, and what I use for majority of in fact all of my wildlife and landscape photography um, I'm not a big landscape photographer but um, I have got some lenses there which I use for landscape and I'm due to buy some more when I um, have some more money available this has taken me an awful an awful long time to buy all these lenses um, over a, a 15 year period so some of them are quite old now but they still do a fantastic job so I'll start off um, at the bottom there. This is a, a 1.4 extender converter, teleconverter, and this effectively um, increases your focal length by 1.4 of whatever you're using it on. So um, 1.4 onto 100 to 400 or onto, onto a 300. 
and just increases your focal length. An absolute must really, and it stays in my bag all the time. I used to have a, a two times converter, but I never really used it. I, I lost that much light uh, and that much, um, it, 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 just, it just wasn't really working for me. So I didn't use it effectively. A two times on this 600 would be 1200 millimeters. And as much as that's great, um, it's got to be rock steady. Uh, and a lot of the time the, the pictures just weren't punchy enough. They're okay, usable. But um, so the 1.4, an absolute must really in your camera bag. So moving on next, this is um, not an L lens actually, this is a Canon 50mm 1.8, f1.8 lens and this is an absolute fantastic little, little lens. It's a plastic housing, this is the Mark II version, autofocus, really really quiet, um, great for like landscape, for, for people, pictures of people, portraits, it's good for vlogging as well, um, a really really good all round lens and actually only costs about £100. Um, I've got a filter on the end of there just to protect it, but it's so lightweight and it's such a good little lens and I do use it quite a lot and the quality to be honest um, Compared with some of the L series lenses, you know, it, it is quite comparable really um, and a fantastic little cheap lens from Canon um, But really really good and that's in my landscape bag Next one here is a bit more of a specialist one really this is a Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye f4 um, not non-image stabilization, and it's an absolutely cracking lens really to, to give you that ultra wide angle view. Um, if you use it on a crop sensor, it's slightly different. You don't get the full effect, but it, you know, it's a fantastic lens, quite a niche lens really, um, using it for, uh, for certainly for landscape. And also I use it for, for close-ups of mammals if I'm photographing um, um, mammals that uh, I know come into a position and I can get them to come up to the to quite close to the camera if I'm for a distance away and I've got a, a, a shutter release um, or a um, IR triggered setup from uh, contraptions that I use, then you get some really, really good effects of um, mammals going in to, 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 to feed and you've got a really lovely big feature in the middle and quite a, um, a blurred edge and quite a bit of uh, vignetting around the edge, but it's an absolutely great little lens that I do use and that's in my landscape bag. A good, all round the next is the Canon 17 to 40 f4. I've had this lens since 2006, um, and it's an absolute beaut. It really is. It's um, it's it's used constantly, really, on my landscape photography. Really, really nice. I'd like the IS version, but I haven't really filled the need, to be honest. With um, usually the light's pretty good when I'm shooting with this, so I don't really feel as if I need that image stabilization. And also the um, you know, the, the actual quality of it is, is absolutely superb and it is quite lightweight. Um, a great, great lens and you can fit um, gelatine filters in the back of there and also on the front element as well. And that's quite a, a, quite a wide angle um, a lens, but really, really nice. Moving on then next, this is the, a lovely, lovely lens. This is the Canon 100 millimeter F2.8 LIS macro lens. Um, so 100 millimeters there not just primarily for macro really, um, it can also be used for, for nice portraits and if, you're, if you are quite close to some mammal species you, you can get away with using this 100mm lens. Um, quite nice to take pictures of um, you know, the animal in its environment really, so you've got the, the subject and you've got a fair bit of its environment in. Really, really sharp, image stabilisation, very, very quick autofocus, um, very, very quiet and it's a lovely, lovely lens, very, very sharp, even f2.8, sweet spot, f4, f5.6, it, you know, it really is an absolute winner. I don't use this that much, I really should use this lens more, it, it almost appears it is brand new, um, and you know, it's an expensive lens, it's, you know, about £1,000, but um, yeah, it's an absolute beaut, and that's constantly in my, um, in my landscape bag. Also with that there, for the, for the macro, and I can use for some of the zooms, I've got some um, here, we've got some extension rings. I've got a, a 12 mil and a 25 Mark II. And I use these for macro, allow me to get that little bit closer to the subject. You can use it on um, some of the zoom lenses, but you can also use it on, on the 100 mil there. And you could use it obviously on the ones um, further down the line there. But, but generally I use that on the 100 to 400 zoom and I use it on the 100 mil macro. Don't use them that often, but you know, they have their place and they are in my landscape bag. 
So moving on, this is the, I've done a review on this one and the 7200, but this is 100 to 400 um, Mark II IS L um, 4.5 to 5.6. An absolutely beautiful lens, um, my all rounder really. If I'm out walking the dog or I'm out with my boy or my wife, you know, it's, it's it got the camera around my, around my neck. This is always fixed to it, just for that opportunistic moment really when you get anything coming into view. It's always the way when you're out and you're not expecting anything, you've got the camera with you. Quite a nice sort of zoom range on that one, um, 100 to 400. So a really, really good all round lens and that image stabilization three stops there is, is superb. The older version um, was, was very nice, but it wasn't quite as sharp as this one. This, this, it was a little bit soft, but this one is, is beautiful and the IS on it is absolutely fantastic. So that was probably my lens I used most of all in my, in my camera bag. And then moving up, this is a, a great, another great lens. This is the uh, Canon 70 to 200 F uh, 2.8 IS Mark II. Um, that is is another awesome lens. It, it, you know, it really is very, very sharp. Very good for for subjects in their environment. Um, I won't go into these two too much because I cover that in my review. But uh, it, you know, it's a great lens in low light particularly um, and it's very very fast you know it, it's, it's a lovely lens and quite lightweight too so you know really really good lens for for some subjects in wildlife photography not so good for birds because you, you're a bit limited on that zoom range okay moving on from that one this is a my prime lens this is a 300 millimeter f 2.8 is mark one now i use this a lot actually um this for, for mammal subjects fairly close up. I don't think you can really beat this unless you have the, the Mark II or now the Mark III, but this was probably one of Canon's finest, sharpest lenses for, for many, many years. I got this second hand in absolutely mint condition. With the F2.8, great for um, blowing the background out, so isolating the subject from the background. Pin sharp, so quiet, relatively lightweight when fitted to your camera body. Um, and yeah, it's it's an absolutely fantastic little lens and I use that an awful lot. And um, last but not least, this is the 600 F4 image stabilization Mark One. There is a, a Mark II and a Mark III now, um, but this, you know, it is a heavy lens. You know, it's got its lens hood fitted at the minute. Um, it, you know, it's an absolute beauty, um, but it is rather heavy and you can't really hand hold this one. Um, but you know, with a beanbag support or a sturdy tripod, or you know, you, you can support between a tree or on a branch or something like that. You know, it is great. You need quite a sharp, um, you need quite a high uh, shutter speed to, to retain quite a sharp image. But it, you know, it's a fantastic lens. I haven't felt the need to upgrade it. It really is. It does what it needs to do. It's great for hides. Um, and it, you know, it, it's, um, I've used it a lot more recently than I have done in the past with a bit more mobile with these lenses, but you know, it is a, it is a tremendous lens and um, I, I am reluctant to let this one go. Absolute beaut. And the bodies I use, um, I've got a, a Canon 5 DSR, which I bought second hand, a very high pixel camera, uh, 51 million pixels. It's got the ability for 1.6 crop, 1.3 crop and full frame, which is great when paired with some of these um, other lenses because it gives that added bonus of getting in a little bit tighter. Uh, great high pixel count um, and it's a great landscape macro camera really. Um, not for all, not particularly good in low light, but um, you know it is it is a fantastic, fantastic camera um, and I use this extensively for landscape and some of my macro work. It's there fitted with uh, an L bracket which is good for my landscape and I'll go on to a bit about tripod supports a bit later and ball heads, etc. But that's the clamp that's fitted to it. And I've also got the uh, the BG E11, which is the extended battery pack at the bottom, which houses um, two batteries just to give that extended level of uh, support really when you need it, when you're out in the field and stuff like that and you haven't, haven't got a chance to, to charge your batteries. But yeah, great camera, but uh, a bit unforgiving at times. And um, this is my go-to. Body. This is quite old now, Canon 1DX uh, Mark I, an absolutely beautiful camera, very, very high shutter frame rate, um, 12 to 14 frames a second. I mean, I, you don't really feel the need to, to machine gun off all the time, but this is this is an absolutely beauty, really. Um, the battery lasts for ages, probably in excess of 1,500 shots per, per battery. Um, rugged, weatherproofing is fantastic. 
durability, lastability. It's just it's just a tank really. Uh, it takes a few knocks and bashes. And I fitted it here, which I'll go into later. But this is a easy cover um, for the for the One DX Mark II actually. Um, it's got a little bulbous bit there for the GPS is fitted on the Mark II, but it, it equally fits exactly the same as, as the Mark II for the button positioning. So yeah, it's great to keep the camera protected from sand, salt. You can rest it on the ground a little bit without having to scuff it. So um, yeah, full frame image quality, you know, is, is superb at, um, especially when you're at high ISO as well, if you're in fairly low light, it's, it's an absolute you know, beauty. And I'm, to be honest with the images I get, I'm reluctant to upgrade to the Mark II, but there is a Mark III version out. Um, and maybe in the future, if I have some spare cash, then maybe I'll upgrade. But at the moment, you know, it, I, I haven't, I have never experienced an upgrade so, um, so noticeable as I had when I went from the 1DX, uh, sorry, the 1D Mark IV, and the 1DS Mark III to, to this, it was it was totally changed the way I, I do things. It's absolutely fantastic. And that's basically the, the lenses and the camera bodies I use for all of my wildlife photography. Um, if you if you want to have a you know ask me any questions about anything specific with these lenses, you know please do send me an email or to, um, you know just um, in the comments below, just let us know what you think. But uh, that so far is is my lens and camera body lineup. so far the bags we've covered the lenses and two of the camera bodies I use this is obviously not an exhausted list but these are some of the accessories that I carry um, day to day in, in my camera bag in kind of no particular order we'll just we'll just go through um, relatively quickly about some of the bits I use now <coughs> these here are waterproof covers this one's a waterproof cover for the 300 prime lens and these are by Lenscope, um, an American company. Absolutely fantastic. And this is for the 600. Now these fit to the lenses with the, the hoods fully on. You've got accessible um, pouches in the side so you can put your hands in, you get mobility with adjusting the autofocus. Um, you know, they really are the bee's knees really. And if you're spending money on, a, on any sort of lens really, and um, you can get covers for, for all lenses and you can get the um, obviously the lens coats for the lenses as well, permanently fixed. But these are, are, are particularly good and I use them a lot when I'm out and about really so I don't get cut, uh, cut short really when, it, when the rain starts coming in. But you can just fasten them up and leave them go and they come with um, obviously the hood as well, a hood cover so you don't get any water and stuff up against the, uh, the glass. But you know they are absolutely fantastic and they, and, you know, they are quite expensive to buy for the, for the larger lenses. Um, but you know, if you're spending thousands of pounds, thousands of dollars on on a lens, then you know, spending 150 dollars, 80 quid on a on a cover, I don't think it's too much to ask. But they're um, they're constantly in my bag. Um, also, if weight's an issue, these are um, these are lens hoods um, that are really lightweight, Velcro fasteners, quite rigid. And this is for the 300, and they basically fit around the end of my. Um, either 600 or 300, this one being 300, and, and they're great and they're lightweight. The lens hoods you get with the prime lenses are quite heavy and they're quite fiddly and if you try to have got limited room in your bag, um, they really are become a bit of a problem. They're quite, um, it's, a, it's an absolute space saver and, and they're very lightweight and they do the job fantastically. So I've got one there for the 600 and one there for the 300. Really, really good bits of kit. I've also got some, some camo Gorilla tape uh, which it stays in my bag, which is fantastic. Very sticky, very strong. If you've got any, um, anything you need taping up or anything that happens to your bag or you want to fix a hide or a tripod or it's keeping things steady, this camo tape is, is really, really good. I've also got, I won't bother getting them out, but I've got a set of MVG. And these are IR as well. These are great for when you're stalking wildlife. If, it, if the light's pretty low, excuse me, um, they're great to get on the subject and you know where you are really without stumbling right across them and then flushing them off. So uh, a really good bit of kit to have, but I won't go into those. Um, next, another accessory there is a, a circular polarizer. This is a 52 mil thread for the 300 and the 600. And this is in my bag in case I need it for photographing in, in bright light and obviously over water. Uh, it takes out all that, um, that uh, the, the adverse effect you get from the polarization. Also, it gives it a nice saturated color in there obviously. Uh, a little wheel on the top so you can adjust that for different levels of um, polarizer but a really really good bit of kit 
I've also um, got many headlights I use as well if I'm out and about. And I've also got this little thing here, which is a finger torch, which goes on the finger, just a little bit of light when I'm moving along. Um, lightweight, and it just sticks into my bag. That's a, a great bit of kit. Next of all, which is paramount really, um, when you're out and about, um, is, is your cleaning kit. So we've got a puffer brush there. Sorry, a, a puffer, a blower. I've got a, a lens cloth. I've also got a little lens wiper there to brush any dust off. I've got some cleaning fluid, the recommended cleaning fluid. This is uh, Roscoe Lens Cleaner. And I've also got some Eclipse Optical Cleaner, which is make sure you check the right stuff for your lenses and don't put it directly onto the glass. Put it onto a cloth, onto a lens wipe, and then apply it sparingly. Um, and I use these pet pads here to, to clean the lenses. Try not to clean them too much, just in case you do get any grit on them and you scratch the lens element. But when I'm doing a, a particular shoot or going away to do anything, um, I make sure that I get my lens nice and clean before, um, before I go away. But this kind of stays in my bag, but doesn't always come with me um, when I'm out and about, just to save a bit of room. But um, yeah, I always take a little lens cloth with me anyway for some rain. But that's another great bit of kit to have. Spare batteries for the 1DX, obviously needed, great to have. And same again there, um, spare batteries for the, for the 5DSR. For a lot of landscape and some, some still stuff, I've got a, a Canon remote here, which is a TC80N3, which is a really good thing, self-timer, rapid fire, etc. Um, and I usually, because the battery stays on, there's no on-off switch, I usually just turn the battery the wrong way around and then it just stops the battery coming on. But you know, great bit of kit to, to have in your bag and especially good for landscape. This um, little device here is a, a GPS tracker and a logger. So this fits to the, the hot shoe on the 5DSR and the 1DX. Um, a lot of the newer cameras now have got the GPS function built in, but it also gives you a direction, compass direction, elevation, um, and it also, you can leave it on in your pocket without attached to a camera and just log and it tracks where you are and it um, overlays that onto a map so you know where you've been in the day. Great thing about this is when you're taking images, it, it uh, logs those data in the places you were, so particular species and stuff like that. And if, you, if you're doing something of a sensitive nature, um, some, some stuff that's um, licensed um, species, Schedule one license or licensed um, other way in other parts of the world, then you may want to disable that because obviously you don't want people to know where these particular species are. But uh, a GPS unit, which I which I use quite a bit. Um, I mentioned before about Easy Cover. This is a spare one. This is um, a black version for the One DX. Um, these are twenty five pounds. You know what, fifteen twenty dollars. You know they're absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I really wouldn't uh, go. You know I would really wouldn't go without it. Unfortunately, the 5 DSR hasn't got one with the battery fitted. It's just got one for the, the body itself without the extension. So, um, but yeah, a really, really good bit of kit. I've got a little point and shoot camera, which is um, which quite, um, quite a semi-pro model. It's, uh, it's a Panasonic um, and I, I use that if I need to for a bit of macro. If, I'm, if, if, if it's got it in my pocket, press pocket, then I can just go and take some, take some shots with that. But a really, really nice camera. Shoots in RAW as well, which is good. Um, varying straps there. Um, this is a an Optec USA sort of cami strap. Um, they're good straps. I'm always a bit juiced about these clips in case they come off. You know, expensive bit of kit around your around your neck or whatever. So um, I do use them. They are pretty good. But I've I've now moved on to Peak Designs, and they do um, an absolutely amazing strap. This is my landscape strap, um, and you know the, these are absolutely fantastic. I've got links in below the description of this vlog. Um, about information about these, but they're such such good quality. I mean, you know, you pay your money for them, but they are unbelievable. Um, they do varying different types of straps, but they really are so easy to use. Um, very very good quality, and you get quick release links on these as well for the lenses. So you know, you're literally putting it on, and you probably can't see particularly well, but these links here just sit in, they lock, and they just aren't going anywhere, and they're amazing, and they're so quick release. You know, just take them off and then you're gone. So they really, really are an absolute game changer, really, um, in the strap sort of the camera lens world. Really, really good. Okay, next standard thing, really, in there, just in a little low pro case, I've got the chargers for um, the 1DX and the 5DSR, and they obviously go with me, but not generally when I'm out trekking around because um, they're actually quite cumbersome. I've got a, um, a little spirit level that fits into the hot shoe on the camera. I've got an inbuilt uh, spirit level within the camera, but I always kind of like to have a little spare, but it's a great little 
bit of kit and it doesn't really cost very much. In there we've got Allen keys and screws for the primer lens brackets and things like that in case anything becomes loose it's always good to, tight, um, to tighten those up. Um, and here I've got, this is my mic muffler and bits and bobs for my vlogging camera. This is um, uh, a Comica um, system set up and, they, and I find that absolutely fine for, for what I need. I've got a flash unit here. This is a remote trigger flash unit. This is a, a, a Canon flash, which I don't use that often to be fair. And it doesn't usually go with me um, everywhere I go, but I've got it in, ca in case I need it if I'm doing a bit of night shooting with a trigger release or anything else like that. And here is my filter set. So these, these are absolutely lovely filters. I've got Lee, a Lee filter holder, Lee 100. I got the uh, the seven millimeter thread wide angle. Got the polarizer there, and I've got uh, a 0.6, uh, 0.3, 0.6, 0.9 um, medium grad in there with some other bits and bobs for any sort of uh, landscape work I'm doing. Um, but great, great filters. Quite expensive. Something I want to use more of, but uh, but really, really good, really, really good to use to give you those effective shots. This is a little uh, pouch just in there with. Just spare memory cards, so compact flash and SD cards. There's also, there's also some batteries in there for flash units, GPS, etc. Um, I've also got a handheld GPS, and I've got um, a knife, and I've got a survival pack as well. Um, as I was a survival specialist, really not to if I'm going somewhere in, um, you know, deep deep into a forest or deep into some mountain range somewhere. You know, to have that survival pack with me, it, you know, is 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 a must really in case you. Um, get yourself into any difficulties and if you want any information on what I carry in my survival pack you know please um, please let me know and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll let you know what I put in it. It's quite self-explanatory really and it's quite quite cheap to put together but it's in a nice little cami pouch probably about the same size as, as, as this really and it just straps onto one of my bags. Varying screwing filters there, I've got a, a big stopper 10 and um, there's a couple other filters there as well, polarizer and an ND filter. And that basically is, is what I use some of my ad additional accessories really. As I said, GPS is a good one, mobile phone, mobile phone charger. Oh, what I didn't cover as well, the charging side of things is quite important. Now, this is kind of extreme really. This is a RAV power solar kit. So it's much for my mobile phone, but this is a a good friend of mine, Morton Hilmer, put this, put this on to me, who's a tremendous wildlife photographer, and he goes into all sorts of um, weird and wonderful places, um, you know, very, very remote. And I have used this when I've been in Scotland um, for my mobile phone, basically, and some of my camera batteries. This straps on um, to my backpack or somewhere on a tree or on a tent. Um, this literally just charges up. You've got three charging ports here, one, two, and three, with USB adapters and you can charge your phones, your cameras, everything up from them, and it really does help you if you need it in a, in a bind, really. If, you, if you're trekking somewhere, you've got your, the, the solar panel on your back, and you've got your mobile phone in your pouch, it can just constantly charge your mobile phone. So a great device, a really, really good thing to have. Got clips and stuff as well to fit with it. Um, this is the three USBs. Plug them in, attach them, away you go. You know, even if it's fairly, it's not direct sunlight, you still get a little bit of charge in there so a really really good thing to have if you are remote um, and with that as well I've got a series of battery packs now these are a battery stores anchor battery storage devices now these are pre pre charged up before I go anywhere and I can also if I haven't got the Sun I can attach USB leads for my charging for my phone for my camera batteries to the USBs on here and they've got a fast charge function. You stick them on and they basically charge your stuff up in your backpack. Absolutely superb. It can even charge up your, your MacBook Pro um, laptop or whatever. Um, it does take time but they are absolutely superb and you can attach these to the solar unit as well. Um, if you're away trekking for the day and you'll need them charge up, if you're if you're away from anywhere, you know these really are a must and they aren't actually that expensive. And I've also got a little, this is for my 5GSR, this is a little cheap um, battery charger for that which has got a little adapter and you can charge it to that and to these units here absolutely superb quite weighty the batteries um, but you know great bits of kit and a good thing to have with you really the last thing you want if you're out and about is to run out of battery power and, and, and miss your shots and in here there's varying cables and the cables that come with this unit here are a bit flimsy and they do break 
Um, so Morton put me onto these. Um, these are some some really um, hard wearing anchor um, uh, cables, and they're very long as well, one and a half meters, I think. And there's varying clips as well for the for the solar unit there, where you just clip it to a tree, etc. But you know, it's quite extreme. It's not needed for every day. But uh, they're there if I need it, if I'm out and about, the last thing you want is to, is to be cut short. Um, if you've got any questions about any other kit or you want a bit more information, um, all the links to these will be in the description below the vlog, um, to Amazon, to places you can buy them. Uh, so if you're interested, you know, have a look. Um, I don't think I've missed anything out. Maps are obviously a good backup as well. If you're, if you're trekking anywhere, always good to have a, have a map and always let, you know, let someone know where you're going, roundabouts, because uh, you never know, you could get cut off or isolated. But, but that's pretty much what I use and I don't obviously carry these all the time. These are um, stuff that I need when the situation dictates. So this is pretty much um, towards, towards the end of um, what I carry in my bags um, and with me when I'm out uh, doing a lot of my wildlife photography. Um, this here is a, a rather large Manfrotto tripod. Um, this is used for supporting my prime lens really, my 600 and maybe the 300 with a teleconverter fitted. Um, and on top of that, again from Lenscoat in America, this is a Wimbley gimbal head Mark II. And there's the gimbal head there. It's got this full movement. Great, a great bit of kit really, um, probably not that um, well shown to you there from, from the camera, but um, a great bit of kit, a great bit of kit. Quite expensive, but an absolute must. Turns your heavy outfit really quite um, quite weightless and just one finger movement really, and lock it down and keep it quite sturdy, but a, an absolute great bit of kit. Tripod, as I said, very, very heavy, um, but uh, if I'm doing some hide stuff or doing stuff from the vehicle, um, I usually set that up there and it's it, it's a huge tripod, absolutely superb. Um, as I say, there's the cover there. Also, I've got a Kirk bracket there. This is for the uh, simple system to lock onto. As I said before, the L bracket just locks onto that, nice and simple, very sturdy for landscape and any sort of macro work you're doing. So quite expensive little brackets, but really, really good. Kirk, uh, awesome stuff. I think they're a South African company, but really, really good. Um, a Manfrotto ball head there. Really, really good little piece of kit. Um, the ball is really, really mobile, gets you into position, locks it off. It's got a built-in spirit level, top and bottom there. Um, and I've got the links to these are also in my, uh, in my description. Um, and that's a really, really good piece of kit. I've got a, a lighter weight uh, tripod setup, which is carbon fiber with a video panning head, which is um, a Manfrotto um, RC102 which is fitted great for video and, and, and great for, for panning motion with a smaller lens. And also in my bag, I carry a nice monopod, which is great for if you're on, if you're on boats and things like that. Um, and if you're out and about on that extra bit of stability, it's, it's a great bit of kit. And on the legs of these, I've got again, lens, lens coat um, leg protectors. And also it's quite nice with these because when you're in cold climates and, you, and even with gloves on, you know, the metal gets really, really cold. So these, a nice bit of uh, softness there, a nice bit of durability and stops getting the, the knocks and bangs. So, you know, that's really what I use for the tripod supports. And, and also I've got a little mini Manfrotto tripod there, which I can pop my little, um, my little uh, point and shoot on there and give that a bit of stability as well. And also good for, for vlogging and things like that. So another, another great bit of kit. Along with that, I think the list is endless. An absolute must for me is this bad boy. This is uh, my beanbag support. Um, I've used it on the ground, on rocks, in trees. I've used it for my vehicle. You know, you fill it with polystyrene balls, rice, whatever you want, as light as possible, preferably. A nice little soft patch there. Lens on top, supports the 600, absolutely fine. Um, and do most of my stuff from the vehicle. And if I'm out and about mobile with this, just gives you that little bit off the ground. Um, I've taken some lovely shots and this has been an absolute must. Also, another good thing, I've got many of them, but this is a, a, a hide. This is a, a bag hide for one individual um, with a very, it's got a net on the top. Really, really, really good. This is real tree camo, again, from Lenshide. I'm not sponsored by Lenshide, um, but they are really the only company, I think, in the world that produce such great equipment. You know, it, you know all, all environments, Arctic, desert, jungle, 
you know, they really do supply the right stuff and it lasts, it's really, really well made and they're a great company to speak to. If you want any bespoke stuff, they really are superb. So well worth looking at. And that pretty much covers for the, for the tripod support. I mean, I may do a, um, a go into more into depth a bit about the, the landscape setup and, and the gimbal head and things like that um, at a later date. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed my uh, equipment uh, listings today. You know, there is a lot of kit here. It is expensive, I guess, some of it's not, but it took me an awful lot of time and, you know, effort and money to save for it. So I think the most important thing is protecting your equipment. Protect your equipment, it'll look after you. It lasts a long time. It's good for the second hand market when you want to upgrade, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's nice to, to keep it in best condition as possible, give it a fighting chance, especially as wildlife photographers were out in these um, awkward environments, sometimes when the weather is, is not very forgiving. But if you have any questions, anything I've said that you're not so keen on, and if you, if you aren't keen on my you know, review uh, and my breakdown of what I carry, then please please let us know. You know if you give us a thumbs up, share and, and like and subscribe. But if you give me a thumbs down, you know, just let me know what you didn't like. You know, I, 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 I'd like to know how I can improve and if I've done something that someone's not particularly keen on. But uh, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.